ghostess with the mostess. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghosts as... Topper. This is Cosmo Topper, who never believed in ghosts. And this is Marion and George Kirby, who never believed in ghosts either, until they were wiped out in an avalanche. That was pretty convincing. And this is the third of the ghosts that only Topper can see or hear. Neil Kirby, who seems to have been making a night of it. What are you two doing? Hard night. George just had to be the life of the party, chasing all the women. I was the cause of only one fight. Of course, it lasted all night. <laughs> Where's Henrietta? How about a little breakfast? Henrietta's on the phone. We've already had breakfast. Oh, I may take my custom elsewhere. Ah, uh, we wouldn't really, Tom. I'm reconciled to that. Oh, no. I just had the most fascinating phone call. Fascinating phone call? Marion, let's go back to bed. What's that? Um, I had a bit of a headache there. Come on, Neil. But look. It's one of those traveling pains. Uh, well, guys, well, you'll never guess. Oh, guess what? My phone call. It was from Miss Gouge. Miss Gouge? Of my college, Gouge Hall. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, well, I don't want to be late to the bank here. Oh, but, but this... This concerns the bank, Cosmo. Oh, really? The old school is in trouble, dear, and they called on me for help. Isn't it flattering? Yes, very. But I happen to be a little bit short at the time. What do they want from you? Ten dollars? Twenty dollars? Forty thousand. What? Oh, not from us, dear, from the bank, just alone. Miss Gouge called me because I was the only Gouge girl who ever married a bank president. Now, where did they get the insane idea that I was a bank president? I told them. Well, my dear, Mr. Schuyler would never lend $40,000 to a bankrupt girl's school. So if you'll excuse me... Oh, but me, it's I... not bankrupt, not really. And it's the most respected college in the country. No man ever set foot in the Gouge dormitories. Oh, those happy college days. Well, if it has such a wonderful reputation, then why is it in trouble? A trusted janitor stole $40,000 in bonds, and she won't tell what she did with them. Well, can't they force her? They're afraid of a scandal. You see, when she went to jail, they found out she was a man. I see. Well, I'll talk to Mr. Schuyler, dear. Tell him to be generous, Cosmo. Generosity never set foot in the heart of Rufus B. Schuyler. Mr. Schuyler? Yes, Topper? Oh, I, I'd like to talk to you for a moment. Uh, shall I come into you or... Very well, I'll wait for you. Uh, it's about a loan, Mr. Schuyler. Uh, while it may not be quite in our line, I... Mr. Schuyler? Do I look like Mr. Schuyler? Uh, reporting for work, Topper. What do you want us to do? Go home again. Topper! Is this gratitude for us getting a valuable sleep? Stop sitting on my books. Get off. Get off. Who are you talking to, Topper? <laughs> Just a few insects. You talk to insects? <laughs> Bookworms. They're very intelligent. I see. Do you want to talk to me, or do you draw the line at human beings? <laughs> What's the big deal, Topper? This has nothing to do with you. Well, no reason to get your back up. <laughs> Mr. Schuyler, it's about a loan. 
But it might be a little out of our line. How much of a loan? Oh, Forty thousand dollars. No, it's out of our line. Uh, I thought perhaps it might be. But since so many young girls are involved, I thought perhaps... Uh, uh, girls? Girls? Uh, how many? Oh, 40 or 50. Well, uh, what do they need the money for? Topper, you're going to back a musical. A musical? Musical? Well, I don't think the bank would be interested in anything so uh, undignified. Neither did I. Uh, still, some of them turn into sound investments. He's right. This will be another South Pacific. Another South Pacific? No. Really? Well, South Pacific made millions and only had 30 girls. No, wait, Mr. Schuyler. You haven't let this go to some other bank, have you? Got a part for me, Topper? No. Then why are we wasting time? You take this check to the producer. Nail down this deal, Topper. But, Mr. Schuyler... Another South Pacific. <laughs> Come on, Topper, off to Buffalo. Well, Topper, I, uh, I think I ought to explain that... Uh... Grab his arm, George. Get in step, Topper. Explain what, Topper? And away we go. <laughs> We were strolling through the park one day On the merry, merry month of May We were taken by surprise by a pair of roaring eyes While strolling through the park one day My sentiments are all with Neil. Well, is it our fault that you don't appreciate the finer things? And may I inquire what all this is about? We're going to be in your show, Topper. Get a load of this, Topper. Well, just to give you a rough idea. Marion, George, there is no show. No, no show? show? Oh, you mean the star is sick? Well, I'll take over, Topper. While strolling through the park one day In the merry, merry month oh, no, you, you don't understand. I was... Huh? You, you don't understand. It was all a mistake. There never was any show. I wanted the money for something else. Topper, you support 50 girls? Well, hardly. Henrietta's College needed the money. Oh, they're putting on the show. No, no. Well, make up your mind, Topper. No one is putting on a show. Henrietta's College needed the money, and she wanted me to ask Mr. Schuyler for it. And he gave it to you. Topper, how clever of you to pretend it was for a show. I shall return this bank draft to Mr. Schuyler. It was never intended for Gouge Hall. N not Gouge Hall College for Girls. You know the college? Topper, the most beautiful girls in the world. But go get past the warden. I've no intention of trying. No, of course not. I couldn't get within a mile of the place when I was alive. But now... <laughs> get a grip on yourself, George. When do we leave? You're staying right here. Of course I am, Cosmo. But I suppose you'll be delivering the money to Miss Gouge. How did you know Mr. Schuyler gave it to me? I called him today at the office. You did? He kept talking about a musical. I guess the girls will pay back the money by putting on a show. While strolling through the park one day. Oh, please stop singing. Who's singing? Uh, the cricket on the hearth. He's got a terrible voice. Oh. You did get the check, didn't you? Uh, well, uh, yes uh, and no. Oh, give it to her, Topper. Stop that. <laughs> oh, Cosmo, you're wonderful. But how did you make it fly over to me? Well, it, it blew over. It's a bank draft. <laughs> Continuing with the news, a police dragnet today still failed to produce any trace of the missing banker who absconded this evening with 40,000 of bank funds. The man is described as of average height, mousy hair, ratty mustache, and small, beady eyes. He answers to the name of Cosmo Topper. 
This is ridiculous. Bank President Schuyler issued a statement saying that the fleeing topper is armed and asked the police to, to shoot on sight. <laughs> shoot on sight? Schuyler urgently requested, however, that the police not shoot through the hip pocket where Topper is believed to be carrying the money. It's unbelievable. Why? Why? Because I... And now a word from our sponsor. Very amusing, George. I thought so. You're a pushover for an old gag, Topper. Well, well, now that you've had your little laugh, suppose you get out of the car. Oh, don't be a sore head. I simply can't have you getting into bank business, George. All I want to do is get in that girl's dormitory. I forbid you to come. All right. I forbid you to forbid me. Uh-oh. What's the matter? I'm afraid I got a flat tire. Well, I'll have a look at it. Hey, Topper! Hey, wait! You're a pushover for an old gag, George. Mr. Topper's here from the bank. Mm, seems very nice. Leslie, Gouge Hall has been run since 1902 without the help of any man. No matter how nice they act, their intentions are all the same. Yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful? I mean, terrible. I'll <laughs> well, bring him in. For the sake of the school, I'll try to be civil to him. Mr. Topper, come in, please. How do you do? Very well, thank you, Mr. Topper. Won't you sit down? Uh, thank you. And uh, this is one of our students, Miss Fanning. How do you do? Henrietta speaks quite often of her college days here. As I remember, she wanted to be a missionary. Well, she's still in a bit of a stew. <laughs> Come in. Odd. No, I think that's George. I beg your pardon? Uh, George Washington. A nice picture. <laughs> Mr. Tuck, that is a picture of me. Oh, remarkable likeness. Well, the young one's mine, Topper. Quiet. Who are you telling to be quiet? Uh, your picture... Uh, speaking likeness. If you think, Mr. Topper, that our financial position permits you to come in here and... Miss Gouge, remember the school. Perhaps we'd better get down to business. How are you talking? You understand there must be no publicity about our financial emergency. The stolen bonds may never be recovered, but the reputation of Gouge Hall must be preserved. Oh, I, I understand, yes. Now, fortunately, the perpetrator of the crime cleaned only the executive buildings. She or he was never in the women's dormitory. Our target for tonight. No man will ever set foot there. Um, that's what you think, George. Stop calling me George. <laughs> Scourge. Mr. Topper. Your loan entitles you merely to 5% interest. Uh, uh, quite, of course. Perhaps you'd better leave, Leslie. We can't let her go, Topper. George! I really must leave, Mr. Topper. Uh, Put down that stick, Mr. Topper. One for the road, Leslie. <laughs> Uh, Topper, leave this office. She can't talk to us that way. I won't stand for this. You won't stand for this. I intend to call the police. Scouge. Soften her up with a kiss, Topper. You're a disgrace to the campus, George. My name is not George, it's Abigail. She likes you, Topper. Oh, oh, Leslie. To the police station. <laughs> ah, happy college days. <laughs> George, stop. I, I'm going to give myself up. After what you did, you'll get 20 years. I think someone's coming. I can't go any farther. You won't have to. This is the perfect hideout, the anatomy lab. No one will be here at night. The anatomy lab? Topper, I know this campus like the back of my hand. Come on.
Those look like beds. Laboratory tables. Just pick one and lie down. <laughs> George. What? I think there's someone on my left. Well, pick another one. Look. It's a women's dog. George, where are you? Run. I'll shut off the lights. This way out, Copper. George, where are we going? The back door. Quick. Safe again outside, Tupper. Safe, you idiot. We're in the broom closet. I didn't like to disturb you this way, Mr. Schuyler. <laughs> no trouble at all, Mr. Tupper. But after this phone call about Cosmo, I thought we'd both better investigate. And just what did this uh, phone call say? They said there was a maniac loose and they thought it was my husband. Well, he's a little peculiar, but I wouldn't call him a maniac. Then you don't mind driving there? As a matter of fact, I've been looking for an excuse. You can't have Topper alone with all those girls, you know. Miss Gouge said the girls were terrified. Why, what's he doing to them? He seems to be running around in the girls' dorm. Aren't there any hotels? Not on the campus, no. What campus? Gouge Hall. The college you're lending money to. College? What happened to the musical? I'm sure the girls could do Blossom Time. You mean a topper won $40,000 out of me for a bankrupt girls' school? Oh, they'll pay it back. They have a wonderful reputation. Yeah, not after Topper gets through with them. <laughs> we never should have let them go out by themselves. Well, Mastermind, what do we do now? Oh, cheer up, Topper. Things could be worse. <laughs> what did I tell you? Well, we can't sit all night in the broom closet, George. Well, things seem a little quieter out there now. I'll take a look. See anything? The coast is clear. I seem to have gone. Too bad. Let's get out of here. All right, all right. What's the matter? Uh, somebody coming. I see. No, I'll be right over. Good news. Mm. Hardly. Your husband has been positively identified as the prowler in the girls' dorm. Mm. That doesn't seem like Cosmo at all. Uh, where is he now? When last seen, he was still prowling. Oh, dear. But I'll see what I can do about getting him out. I must forbid it. No man has ever set foot in our girls' dormitory. Well, why should Topper have the concession? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Neil. Three guesses who's leading Topper on and enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> Stop it, you wolf in dog's clothing. Ouch! Who's that? Who do you think it is, Topper? You stepped on my foot. Well, I'm so glad you're here. George has got me into a terrible situation. Terrible. That's nothing to the situation he's going to be in. Where is he? He's outside somewhere. He said he had a plan for getting me out of this closet. A likely story. What do you mean? Oh, come now, Topper. It's obvious that neither of you two goats can be trusted around the block. What a matter, and I, I must protest it. Then how did you get in this broom closet? What? Got it made, Topper. I'll have you out of here in five minutes. Hello, George. Uh, Marion. <laughs> what a delightful surprise. <laughs> I just bet. And what is this? Um, an argyle sock with an invisible plaid. <laughs> George, how am I going to get out of here in five minutes? The old brain topper. I slipped a note under the door of the campus infirmary, said one of the girls had broken a leg in the dorm and to send an ambulance. Clever? <laughs> you imbecile. I wanted to get out of here quietly without being seen. Of course. They'll carry you out of here in a stretcher. But of all the reveled brain ideas, this is without doubt the better. Shh, shh, shh. Here already. 
just how am I going to get out of here in five minutes? Got that figure, too. Help me, Marion. Who's the girl with a broken leg? No one broke a leg here. Why? We got a note to come right over. Now make up your minds. It's a trick by Jack the Ripper. Maybe we better take a look. <laughs> This way, Poppy. Up we go. Have you out of here in a minute. Hit the lights, Marion. Did we make it outside? I guess we didn't. What happened? He's running amok. But Cosmo never runs amok. He never runs at all. Get the police over here and tell them to ring tear gas. I think they ought to declare martial law. I can handle him. I'll go in and get him up. No man will ever set foot in the gouge hall women's dormitory. There's a man in there making footprints all over. He's got a check of mine for $40,000. Stand I'm back. A... Explain, Mr. Schuyler. Given time. Uh... Never mind it now. You have the check. Uh, oh, the check, of course. But the school is in dire need of funds. Yeah, and so am I. Well, I said stop shoving. Yeah, I think he found something, George. There's a loose board. <laughs> I certainly am. There's no danger at all. I'll show you. But the girls, the police. There's no one there at all. It's up to us to hold him until the police arrive. But I can reason with him. Cosmo is very gentle. Henrietta, you know nothing about the true nature of men. Shh. You see? All you need to do is... Go away. Go away. Go why you came in here. He always has a good reason. Why, certainly, my dear. I came in here after the stolen bonds. You found them? I certainly. They were stolen by a janitor. Therefore, I looked in the broom closet. <laughs> Elementary. Oh, he saved the college. Oh, Mr. Topper. Neil finds the bonds. Topper gets kissed. What do I get? Don't worry, George. You'll get yours. <laughs> 